Philadelphia, where where you represent, you you represent the bluest dot, as you call it, uh, in in the I state. Do, yes. You had the highest turnout with an election that just just, just took place. Um, you're tremendously popular, and you're an actual progressive. You know how can there be such a beautiful thing? But you've been uh, at the forefront of of so many pieces of legislation and activism when it comes to uh, representing the black community you know, fully and and understanding like the legacy of the horrible legacy that we have in our country. Um, so let's just start off with some of the bills that you've put forward, because I think this is, you know, really important to discuss sure. before we get to this, the, the symbolism of taking down these statues. Sure, sure. Well, I thank you for having me on the show. I've been pretty busy. Uh, I was elected the same night as what's his name in 2016. I joined the smallest Democratic uh, uh, minority in the House of Representatives in 61 years. But within two years, um, we had a kind of a blue tsunami, and it looks like there's a chance that uh, Democrats take back uh, the Pennsylvania House of Representatives and potentially the this, this House, the Senate as well. Um, so that that's good news. But in the interim, I'm working in a chamber dominated by right-wing extremists. Um, so I've been busy working on things, uh, all justice-oriented, whether it's environmental justice, racial justice, reproductive uh, freedom, so forth. And uh, in this moment, uh, a lot of the bills that kind of languished are now getting more popularity and interest from my constituents and people around the state and around the country, most notably things around police violence. So I have a bill um, that would create a statewide database so that um, the police can't pass the trash from one police department to another. They go skulking out of one place before they get fired. They can end up somewhere else and do the same or worse harm oh. in another community, unbeknownst not just to the people who they're supposed to protect and serve, but to the very chiefs of police who hire them who don't know how bad they are. Yeah. This, this statewide um, database will protect everyone except those uh, those rogue cops. And that's an important thing because we need that type of transparency and accountability that the Fraternal Order of Police and other apologists uh, claim is not an issue when in fact police violence has been built into the very notion of policing in this country since 1700 in Pennsylvania. So for 320 years, we have an institution of policing that was based on uh, protecting the social order of white elites and their property. That's really the basis of policing as we know it in the North. And um, not much has changed yeah. in terms of what they protect. And most notably, um, there's some amazing pictures um, about them protecting uh, a, a white racist former uh, mayor of, of Philadelphia and former police commissioner. And um, his uh, he has this extraordinary statue uh, in front of the municipal building in downtown Philly across from City Hall. And um, it was spray painted fascist. It was like fake blood put on it. It was all great stuff. The next day, it was whistle clean. It was shining like a beacon of white supremacy the next day. And a whole squadron of police officers protecting it. This is so Frank Rizzo? that tells you... This is Frank Rizzo. This is the uh, uh, the infamous uh, right. pro, pro police brutality, former mayor, former uh, commissioner. Um, so this tells you about what the priorities are of kind of modern police and historically. So if we're talking about toppling a 320 year institution that has not really changed that much in terms of what it actually does, then we have systemic change that we have to address. And it's not gonna be happening by police reforms and just right. playing around the edges. We have to totally overhaul what we view as policing. And we have to put it in the context of what I call community safety. Because if it's not about community safety, that means that the, the old notion of uh, protecting and serving is really narrow towards the, the people and the things that police care about most, which is the property rights of rich white people and the um, uh, protecting white women and girls from the bad people, right? Mm -hmm. um, 
So if you look at Amy Cooper, right, she could feel comfortable calling and making things up. It didn't matter who the black person was. Right. Just the idea that there was a black man invading the space of a white woman automatically gave her power and affirmed the type of uh, power that these police uh, forces have. And we got to shut that down. If yeah. they're truly doing their job, then we're really talking about every community feeling as safe as, as the next one. Thank you for watching and listening to The Nomi Key Show. Make sure to click like and subscribe on YouTube and share with everybody on social media. And of course, if you're not a patron already, please join us on patreon.com slash The Nomi Key Show for as low as $5 a month. That money makes a huge difference. We don't have the corporate money coming in. We're not uh, cable news that's raking in the dough from, from advertisers right now as everybody's sitting at home and watching. It is really you guys who are keeping us together. So please consider being a patron. And for those of you who have already, we are incredibly grateful to you.